Hello kids, I'm back for another topic in Mathematics 6. Our next lesson is about solving routine and non-routine problems involving different types of numerical expressions and equations. When do we solve equations in real life? We use them when we want to find the unknown in a mathematical sentence problem. Now, let us try to answer the problem. Initially, the mangoes in two baskets were not equal. Emily counted eight mangoes in one basket. To make them equal, she added five more mangoes in the second basket. How many mangoes were in the second basket? Emily added five. To solve the given problem, you need to determine the value of the variable in the equation x plus 5 equals 8. The variable represents the number of mangoes in the second basket before Emily added 5. The phrase to solve means to find the number that will make the open sentence true. Equations often contain constants and variables. To solve the equation x plus 5 equals 8, you need to find the value of variable x. You can do this by reversing the operation. If 5 added to x is 8, then you can get x by subtracting 5 from 8. x plus 5 equals 8 implies x is equal to 8 minus 5. Therefore, x equal to 3, you can easily check your answers by using substitution. When x equals 3, then 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. You can also draw a diagram to solve equation x plus 5 equals 8. The diagram shows the relationship between x plus 5 and 8. It shows a part whole model. Since the whole or 8 and one part or 5 are known, then you can get the other part x by subtraction. So x is equal to 8 minus 5 or x is equal to 3.
Now, let us try to solve the equation x plus 4 is equal to 12. To solve the equation, think of reversing the operation. The solution is the sum of 2 and opposite of 4. Hence, x plus 4 is equal to 12. Now, if we reverse the operation, x is equal to 12 minus 4. So, x is equal to 8. To check the result, replace x with 8 in x plus 4 equals 12. Since the end statement is a true statement, then this means that 8 is a solution to the equation x plus 4 equals 12. You can also draw a diagram to solve the equation x plus 4 equals 12. Can you see it on your monitors? The diagram shows the relationship between x plus 4 and 12. It shows a part whole model. Since the whole or 12 and one part or the number 4 are known, then you can get the unknown part, which is x, by subtraction. So x is equal to 12 minus 4, or x is equal to 8. Equations that have the same solution are called equivalent equations. Now, let us try to solve the equation. x minus 7 is equal to 3. To solve the equation, think of reversing the operation. If 7 is subtracted from x is 3, then x is the sum of 3 and 7. Hence, x is equal to 3 plus 7. So, x is equal to 10. To check, use substitution. 10 minus 7 is equal to 3. 3 is equal to 3. So since the end statement is a true statement, then this means that 10 is a solution to the equation x minus 7 equals 3. You can also draw a diagram to solve the equation x minus 7 equals 3. The diagram shows the relationship between x minus 7 and 3. It shows a part-whole model. Since two parts, or 7 and 3, are known, then you can get the whole, or the x, by addition. So, x minus 7 plus 3, or x, is equal to 10. Now, let us try to answer the problem. A basket of fruits has guavas and mangoes. The bananas are three times the number of mangoes. There are 20 fruits in all. How many of each kind of fruits 
are there in the basket? Let n be the number of mangoes and 3n be the number of guavas. Since there are 20 fruits in all, then n plus 3n is equal to 20. Solving the equation yields n plus 3n equals 20. So we are going to add like terms. n plus 3n is equal to 4n. So 4n is equal to 20. n is equal to 20 divided by 4. So we reverse the operation and then we are going to divide. So n is equal to 5. Now we are going to check the result. The number of mangoes is equal to n equals 5. And the number of guavas is 3n is equal to 3 times 5 equals 15. So total number of fruits is equal to 5 plus 15 equals 20. So therefore, there are 5 mangoes and 15 guavas in the basket. So our next problem. Mark is 15 centimeter taller than Richard. How tall is Richard if their total height is 349 centimeter? Let N be Richard's height and N plus 15 be Mark's height. Since the total height is 349, then n plus n plus 15 is equal to 349. We are going to add like terms. So n plus n equals 2n. So 2n plus 15 equals 349. Now we are going to reverse the oper operation. We are going to subtract. So 2n is equal to 349 minus 15. So 2n is equal to 334. n is equal to 334 divided by 2. So n is equal to 167. Now let's check the result. So Richard's height is equal to n equals 167 centimeter. Then Mark's height is equal to n plus 15 equals 182 centimeter. So the total height is equal to 167 plus 182 equals 349. Therefore, Richard is 167 centimeter tall. Let's do the next problem. There are 60 pupils in the laboratory room. The boys are 14 more than the girls. How many girls are there? Check the result. So the number of girls is 23. And the number of girls, boys, is equal to 23 plus 14 equals 37. So the total number of girls and boys is equal to 23 plus 37 which is 60 therefore there are 23 girls in the laboratory room so now bring out your activity sheet and open it on page 14 so let us solve each equation and check the result open your activity sheet on page 14 and solve each equation and check the result for number 1, 3n minus 4 equals 5. Number 2, 2 times a plus b equals 18. Number 3, 2n plus 5 equals 17. Number 4, 4n minus 7 equals 25. And number 5, 4 plus 7m equals 39. For your second activity, write the related equation and then solve the equation. Check 
your answers. Number one, twice a number increased by 12 is 28. Find the number. Number two, the product of 12 less than twice a number is 20. Find the number. Number 3. 25 fewer than a number is 156. Find the number. Number 4. Thrice the sum of a number and 5 is 18. What is twice the number? Remember, to solve an equation, you need to find the value of the unknown or variable in the equation. Congratulations, children. I know you have learned a lot today. What about a round of applause for the work well done? Continue answering the remaining items in your activity sheets on page 13 and 14. And it be checked next meeting. Keep up the good works. Attend, listen. I hope you have learned a lot today. I am Darwin A. Ignacio, your grade 6 mathematics teacher. Until next time, goodbye.